I'm a game designer. But whereas most game designers make games that are focused on pure fun, I set out to make games that go so much, do so much more than that. Games designed to inspire, to empower, and to educate their players. In fact, I believe games' true potential goes way beyond entertainment. In fact, I believe games can change our world. But how do you guys feel about games? How should you feel? Well, today I want to help you answer that question. First, I want to start with a very quick story. When I was 10, I learned to fly a plane. Now, that might sound a tad dangerous or irresponsible of my parents. In fact, it wasn't. It was very safe. Over the course of a summer, I learned to taxi a small two-seater plane across the field, take off on a makeshift runway, and fly. And the experience blew my mind. To be up in the clouds, flying high, that sense of freedom, and the exhilaration of being in complete control. It was a major life experience for me, and one that seeded a passion and enthusiasm for planes and flight that lasts to this day. Now, of course, I didn't fly a real plane. Um, I was only 10. That would have been crazy. I flew a virtual plane. I flew a plane inside this game. Now, the graphics may have been basic, but the experience for me was as visceral and as powerful as it could have been. The fact it was a game was unimportant. My enthusiasm and curiosity was real and lasted to this day. In fact, many of the things I'm most passionate about and curious about, things like ancient civilizations, archaeology, space travel, our climate, even town planning, all started in games. Games, for me as a kid, were a major part of my life. They gave me access to time and places beyond my means and let me get hands-on with our amazing world. Of course, the games I played shaped who I am today and also the games that I want to make. And over the past 15 years, I've made games about neuroscience, drug addiction, mental health, um, genetics, even, game, even subjects like death and philosophy. And these are games that have been played by hundreds of millions of people around the world. These are games with a purpose beyond entertainment. They're quite simply games with purpose. But what makes games so good at this? What makes games such powerful tools for learning and transformation? Well, firstly, play comes very naturally to humans. It's something we do instinctively from birth. If you have kids or you've hung out with babies, you'll know they learn about their world by poking it, touching it, squeezing it, putting it in their mouth, sometimes swallowing it. <laughs> They're experimenting with their world um, through trial and error and witnessing cause and effect. These are the dynamics of all good games. As they get a little bit older, their play begins to be more story-based or role-led, reflecting the world around them and helping them learn about it. And as they begin to be more social, their games get more social too, allowing them to develop their social and emotional skills. But learning through play doesn't end when you stop being a child. Let me give you an example. Think of your favorite game. It could be a team sport, it could be a card game, it could be a board game. How many of you learned how to play that game by reading the rule book? Almost none of you, I guarantee. You would have learned how to play that game by simply playing the game. You might have had some help along the way, but the act of playing has helped you learn the rules. And your mastery of those rules has come through repeated play, otherwise known as practice. But what's remarkable about games isn't just their ability to help us learn, but their ability to increase our capacity to do so. Think back to your game, if I asked you to write down the rules, you'd make a good go of it, but you'd very quickly become overwhelmed with the complexity of what you're trying to describe. The game has made the complex understandable by making it playable. And this is their innate power. But games are more than simply learning machines. Just like films, games are often character-led, allowing you to experience different people's perspectives um, by playing the game. But due to the immersive qualities of games, that experience can be incredibly powerful, letting you literally walk in another person's footsteps. The opportunity for game designers is to use this affordance to tell new stories, different stories, personal stories, to let you experience what you haven't yet experienced. Perhaps what it's like to suffer from gender dysphoria, or to grow up in Syria during the conflicts, or even suffer from psychosis or what it's like to have a terminally ill child in your family. Believe it or not, these are all things you can do in games today. 
games with a purpose beyond entertainment, and games that show me their power to change our world. And the opportunity to do this is right now, because games have never been more popular. Do you know, every day, 32 million people play games in the UK. That's half the UK population. Can anyone guess the average age of a gamer? 20. So you, you might be surprised. It's actually 43, which I, I love this number. It's in the middle of our human lifespan, right? There's many people younger and many people older playing games. This is an average number. What about the gender split? Well, some of you might think that games are more of a male-dominated pastime. You'd be wrong. More females play games than men. The average gamer is a 43-year-old woman. <laughs> and my favorite stat from 2016, the fastest growing gamer demographic was over 50s women. Games are ubiquitous, they're popular, they're diverse, they help us understand our world when we grow up, they help make complex stuff understandable, they can engender deep empathy and understanding with a world we don't yet know. But how do you really feel about games? How do you feel when your child asks you for another hour of screen time? Somehow, our appreciation and value for games does not correlate with their true potential. Why are games seen as a reward rather than a legitimate activity in their own right? Well, the fact is, games have a major image problem. But we need to think differently about games. In films, you have bad movies, age-inappropriate movies, alongside cinematic masterclasses, life-changing movies. Games have the equivalent. I bet you can all name a film that changed your life. I can name 10 games that changed mine. In TV, you've got cheap throwaway TV alongside um, brilliant episodic storytelling and amazing specialist factual programs. Games have the equivalent. Games that update weekly, that tap into timely subjects and provide a commentary on our changing world. In fact, I believe games have far greater potential to deliver transformation experiences than TV and film because they move you from a passive observer to an active participant that allow you to get hands-on with complex phenomena that can inspire and change us. So next time when your child asks you to play a game, don't let your heart sink. Get excited about what life-changing experience they're about to have. And my challenge to you, get involved. You're never too old to play or to learn. Thank you very much.